core scrum assumes that the product increments you're going to build are independent. They're independently valuable when you supply them to the market on their own, and they're independently manageable during the development process. You can build it separate from other things, there's no dependencies, and that works great, really great, as long as you are working in a well-formed team that is co-located, self-contained, and completely independent from any other uh, teams that you would need, which is very problematic, of course, in the enterprise, where throughout the transformation, um, you may have one or two small teams that are able to get away with that and, uh, and develop some pretty cool things in a, in a bit of a bubble protected from the rest of the enterprise. But there's many large teams that have to deliver an entire high visibility program that also have to work with several other teams in order to get uh, different elements that they're dependent on completed from high visibility uh, marketing, visual designs, campaigns, email, text message, automation, um, frameworks, security. There can be several teams that will never be part of your team in an, in an enterprise. And the larger the uh, web or mobile application becomes, the more important it is to find a smart way to branch. That's what, what I want to review today is how to use issue level first branching in JIRA with GitHub as your way to ensure that even those who don't know how to read through the tea leaves, the status of the Git repository, are able to understand exactly what is going on with the product using JIRA. So let's start from the ground up. First of all, you have master. That should at all times represent as closely as possible the code that is currently in production. Off of master, you want to branch to have a develop branch. And develop needs to represent whatever you could possibly release the next time you release. You don't want to create a release branch until immediately before you're going to release. If you have any kind of uh, code freeze or final uh, regression testing to do, you do that here. Releasing at the last moment once you've locked down the scope of what was completed in the interim between releases. When you use JIRA with GitHub integration, what's really great is in your release report, it starts to show you um, the activities at the issue level here that uh, are being completed within the Git repository. All you have to do is tag your branches and commits that way. JIRA will actually start doing this for you if it knows that's what you're trying to accomplish, which is pretty, pretty exciting. That helps you understand what's in a release um, and also what part of a release is already done, whether or not it was code reviewed properly, and whether or not the build uh, server succeeded or failed. Now, what is the issue level when we talk about the issue level? Well, with the architecture of JIRA, out of the box, the issue level is the story, if you're using Agile, and that's usually it. Most people, when they use JIRA for Scrum out of the box, have two kinds of things. They use the story, and they have an epic. The epic in the architecture of JIRA is the parent level, and you can't change this. You can never architect it uh, with the out-of-the-box uh, pieces, of course, to go above the epic level, and we'll get into that more in a moment. But when it comes to doing branching along develop, what you need to understand is if it shows up as a line item in the product backlog view, then it is at the issue level. If it's on that left-hand side, in the epic column, those are epics, and that's the parent level. We'll get to that when we talk about feature branching when you're integrating with JIRA.